That's not to ourselves, but that's to the God that brought us through. Amen. Amen. So let's put our hands together. Let's give God credit. Amen. 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 We honor him this morning because he is worthy of all the praise and all of the glory. Um, this morning, of course, is the first Sunday of the new year, and it's just appropriate that it would fall on Sunday the first year. We can start this year off right. Amen. And that is giving God glory and starting it off with presenting ourselves and our lives and our children and our destinies and our future, putting it in the hands of the only person, the only thing uh, that can give us the victory, that can give us the productivity, the success that we're looking for. And you're in the right place. Amen. You're in the right place because that's what we want. We want to be productive. We're fighting a lot of different things in the world. There are a lot of challenges that we're facing. And it's just, it's, just not, it's just not spiritual, it's natural, it's financial, social, economical. It's, it's all types of things that we're dealing with and that we're fighting. Therefore, it's, it is imperative that um, we understand where our help comes from. Amen. We understand where our victory is going to come from. And that's why you're here. We're here for a reason, we're here for a purpose. Um, my design, my thought today is to start this off right by doing the best thing that I can do and that is to not only give out the word but also to minister, to get us in front of the presence of the Lord so that we can become purged, so that we can become cleansed from old things. I sent you out a text last night said that old things have to pass away and all things must become new. That's true. All things must become new. The way we think must become new. The way we act, the way we present ourselves must become new. The way we eat, the way we, uh, uh, um, the way we function as human beings, not just even as Christians, but as a human being, we have to change our mindset and our direction. Yeah. We have to clean up. We have to stand up. Mm -hmm. We have to be more than what society is trying to make us out to be, which is nothing but desperate modern day slaves. Yeah. We have to be more than that. We have to realize that we're fighting a double war, a two-headed monster. We're fighting a spiritual war and we're fighting a natural war. We're fighting a war from the heavens and we're fighting a war in the natural from those individuals who threaten our liberties and our values. There's a new church that must come on the horizon. There's a new type of Christian that must step on the horizon. It's not about just jumping and shouting and having service and feeling good for a moment and leaving out. No, this, this, this thing called religion or church, it must become real. Because what you're seeing is, you're seeing, and, and I was talking to someone last night, late last night, and I was saying, I can't sleep because um, this thing must become real. There is not enough change. I have not seen enough change. I have not seen for as many churches as we have, as many messages as, I, as I've ministered myself. 11 years, going on 11 years I've been doing this. Well, yes, it actually is over 11 years if you count the assistant pastor. That's a long, that's a long time. And for every Bible study and for every sermon and all the messages that, that God has allowed me to minister, there should be more results. I'm about results. I don't minister to hear myself minister. I'm not trying to entertain. I'm not an entertainer. I was an entertainer. I'd, I'd be in Florida, as I said a long time ago, with Luke and them, okay? Uh, so I'm not an, an entertainer, okay? Yeah, I do this because God has called me and commissioned me. I do this to see individuals, you, your children, be the best that they can be. That's what it's all about. It's all about you being the best that you can be and you affecting somebody else's life. If that is not happening, then we are failing grossly. Are you following what I'm saying? We are failing grossly. My, 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 that today I want to use today to just set some things straight. Uh, Wednesday's Bible study, we started off by talking about things and maybe see it uh, we, we started talking about some things and we were talking about why we do what we do. And I like to kind of continue in that manner about getting an understanding of why we do what we do. Yeah. There's a reason we're going to pray this year. There's a reason we're going to fast this year. That's, there's a reason we're going to conduct a service in the manner of deliverance. Our whole goal this year is deliverance and increase. Increase will also include Amen. overflow. Amen. We're too broke. Yeah. We're too depressed. Amen. We're too up, up, oppressed. We're too sad. We're too wishy-washy. Yeah. We're too double-minded. We're too weak. Come on, somebody. Amen. And we need to be strengthened from the Amen. top all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. We need to be strengthened in mind, 
body, soul, and spirit. Okay? We need to be strengthened in every aspect of who we are. I was talking to someone last night, and, I, and we're going to get to service, but I'm just going to prep your minds if you don't mind. Um, I was talking to someone last night, and I instructed them, and I told them, I said, um, what we have to do is that we have to learn that the greatest gift that we have is the gift of life. Amen. And that we honor God, not just by singing and dancing and shouting, but we also honor God with how we treat our life, how we treat our mind, how we treat our body, how we use, how we use what he has given to us, this body he gave to us, how we treat it, honor, how we treat it honors him. This mind he gave us, how we use it honors him. So it's, it's, not just, it's not just the exaltation and the formality of some physical attribute of worship or expression of worship, but it's also in my lifestyle. It's also in my discipline. Yeah. This year, what my goal is, is to infuse some discipline into what we call the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We need discipline. Say it with me, discipline. 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 The, the modern day Christianity, if you, if you say Christianity, most people associate it with the, uh, with, with the Catholicism worldwide, and that's not true, Catholicism is not Christianity. Um, we deal more so on the Pentecostal level from Martin Luther. We deal more with the Pentecostal level. The more Pentecostal level is that we believe in the liberties of the spirit, meaning that we believe that there is power. There is still power. God still does miracles. He does, he does allow us to speak in a heavenly language. Uh, we do believe in healings. We do believe in manifestations of things that are divine because we, we adhere to Mark 16, 17, which says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. We believe that the spirit of dead then is still working now. Yes. Because Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, yes. said that the works that he does, that's right. we should do even more of those works. Yes, that's right. Okay, and so whatever he did, and that's why he had to go away to the Father, so that his, so that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos, the Helper, yes. could then help all of us by living within all of us. That's uh, right. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. That empower, the world tries to call it energy. Or they call it some other type of name, and usually they're invoking demons or spirits. We're invoking the Holy Spirit because you have to realize you have another side, a dark side of the world of, of the of, of, of the equator. If you look at a battery, it has positive and negative. There's two different ends, the yin and the yang. If you understand those things, then you understand if there's a good, there's an evil, and there's a, if there's always an imposter, there's always someone that's trying to do uh, be the opposite or to uh, of what someone else is trying to do. So you, you're fighting this war. So you have what we call spirits of clairvoyancy. What is a clairvoyant spirit? A clairvoyant spirit is a spirit that tries to imitate, okay, a good spirit. It comes to imitate. It comes as an angel of light. Now, let me give you scripture. God said the, the enemy comes as an angel of light. Doesn't come as an, as an evil spirit, he comes as an angel of light. Yeah. He tries to present himself off and pass himself off as something good, when in actuality, the motivation or the intent is negative. To kill, steal, and to what? To destroy. Today is the day of your beginning. Today is the day that you, and I have to say this because we're going to go into prayer. My, if God allows me to, my, my, my focus is to lay hands on you. We're going to get before God because we need prayer. Amen. We Amen. need prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. We need prayer. We need prayer. That's what we're doing. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And then God is going to do his part. I'm going to just be used as a vessel. He will get all the credit. Amen. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? He will get all the credit. I give him all the glory. Hallelujah. But we're going to pray and we're going to move because you need deliverance. And I'll tell you what our goal is. Today is your new beginning. And today you can establish everything. Everything that you have been dealing with in your life. Everything that you have fallen against throughout your life. You have the opportunity now to begin to set those things straight. And there's nobody standing in front of your way except for you. This is your opportunity. This is your time. What will you do with it? And you can choose not to believe, you can choose to have an attitude, you can choose to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. But me, I choose to do like Josh, Joseph said. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Will it be God or will it be man? Mm -hmm. I choose to serve God. Amen. Amen. I choose to serve God. Amen. I choose to serve God. Amen. 
not with some false uh, pseudo religious intellectuality that has no substance or real, real meaning. I choose to serve God with substance. I choose to serve him with my whole heart. Yeah. I choose to serve him to where people in darkness can see the light. Amen. Are you following Amen. what I'm saying? Amen. No, I'm not talking about any hypocrisy or any hip 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 hypocrisy of just being what we call a church goer. We're not church goers. We're not trying to produce church goers. Don't want to deal with church goers. We want to deal with people who can become soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. That's why I call this ministry and the people in it coming up soldiers. You would have to begin to change your thinking. It's no longer just, I go to church. The devil is, is, is raging. The evil is too strong uh -huh. for that type of lazy attitude, right. for that type of lazy mentality. You must get the attitude, I'm in a war, therefore I must think like a soldier and a person that is in a war. Yeah. I cannot think like I'm out in Alice in Wonderland. And as long as I just walk around and tiptoe through the tulips, because if you do that, you will get destroyed. Right. And tiptoe through the, stu through the tulips. You have to pick up your gun, your sword, as we say, the sword of the Spirit, which is Amen. the Word of God. Amen. You've got to fight. Amen. That's what Paul Amen. told Timothy. Now, if we understand, and I'm not going to be through in a minute, but I have to set the stage for that okay. most of us are still asleep, and most of us need to get our minds together, so I'm going to help you wake up. Amen. <laughs> I mean, if I'm talking about something that gets through, Amen. by the time I get through laying out the foundation here, then we'll be ready for prayer. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you have to understand that when Paul talked to Timothy, he was dealing with eschatology. What is eschatology? Eschatology is the study of the end times. We are living in the end times. Right. Yes, you are. You look at Revelation chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 14, you will begin to see, and as I begin to study, you will begin to see God, Paul, I mean, sorry, John expressing through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he began to express what we're dealing with in these last days. You are dealing in the last days. And that's all it is to it. You're not going to stop it. You can't change it, but what we have been commissioned to do is to be a light and an example before Christ's return, okay? There are things that are just going to happen. What we're, our position is to be a light before those in the midst of darkness. Our job is to be an example and, 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 and for, a, for people who are in darkness to see the example of how one is supposed to act, right. how one is supposed Amen. to live, Amen. how one is supposed to think. We're to be that example. People should be able to look at us and see that example in this last day. Yeah. The Antichrist spirit is already out. Everything around us is Antichrist, which means anti-God, against God, against God. We, know we talked about it. I don't have to go through the minutia of everything. We talked about music. We talked about media. We talked about all these different things. You know, we talked about secret societies. We talked about those things. We understand those things in this ministry. And these things have been set up to, to manipulate us, to get us to uh, thinking against one another, to get us to be become separate and individualized, seeking our own, uh, our own position. Instead of unifying and coming together and standing up together, yes. and we are being dis discarded, discombobulated, yes. disjointed, yes. so that all we care about is what matters to us yeah. instead of what matters to us yes. as a whole. Yes. That's, right. That's, That's why it's right. hard to get unity in the body of Christ yeah. Yeah. because you come from a society that has manipulated you and, and yeah. programmed you into being coming desperate in your own yeah. agenda. Yeah. Are you following what That's I'm right. saying? Yeah. And this is evident. This is evident. This is evident in game shows and in reality. What they're doing is pushing an agenda, making you become desperate, putting before thing, putting things before you that can never probably happen to you. Nobody can have an $80 million wedding. That's almost impossible. Some of the things they're pushing in the face of people who are just average $2 million Bugattis, putting that in your face, a million dollar chain 